Hey, this is Chrissy McMahon, and I'm just sitting here trying to play some pods because I know that's what everybody loves to listen to, not just the wonderful music. And, um, and since I'm so interested in alternative and free energy, uh, we, have, we have such a special treat here at Awake Radio. We not only have Granada Steve, who um, promotes and uh, plays a lot of uh, important people come on his show to talk about alternative energy, but we also have um, uh, Shaziz, who uh, has been simulcasting here for quite some time, and recently we just got an additional... Uh, duo, dynamic duo of Cultus Negran and Kent, is it Anderson? I hope I'm saying it correctly. And we have live on air, we have Cultus. Say hello, Cultus. Get out here, we all going? We're going good. Awesome. <laughs> How are you? Hi. I'm doing very well. I'm very uh, excited to be here at Wake Radio. Seems like we're uh, going to fit in very, very well here. Absolutely. We're so excited to have you. This is just a wonderful, wonderful treat that this is the most important and exciting thing in history is this uh, move to our alternative and free energy. And you are actually, actually not just a promoter, but you are a dabbler and creator of alternative energy devices. So maybe you just want to give us a rundown on some of the wonderful things that you've had a chance to dabble in and have uh, have found out in your dabblings all righty so um i began this uh little adventure of mine about five years ago now and uh been through a few different forums and currently uh heavily involved in a forum known as the international alternative energy center which is the iaec dot forum co dot com is their website and uh we basically over there we have got literally somebody working on every single project there is not a project getting left out over there. We've got everything from, the, from from someone fiddling around with the gate system through to pulse motors. I'm uh, at the present moment building up a fairly fairly big Tesla coil setup, uh, which is going to be used for uh, tran uh, wireless transmission of energy across the world. So uh, I've got uh, Kent set, set, set up who's going to uh, be building a uh, rece receiving coil. Uh, also, Shaziz will be doing it. And I had a, uh, a friend who's a Sparky, uh, which is an electrician here in Australia, who uh, is interested in doing it, who's up the top end of Australia as opposed to me who's down the bottom. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, sort of the direction we're going at the moment. We've, uh, we're currently, uh, one, one thing I'd just like to throw out there for everyone who's listening is at the present moment, the International Alternative Energy Centre is actually running a promotional competition. There's huge prizes involved and it's to uh, encourage new people to come along and get involved in this kind of work. And uh, basically, uh, the objective is is to build a pulse motor. And these are a very simple uh, circuit, a very simple construction that pretty much anyone can, uh, can, can put together. I've, I've seen, seen young, young children put these together. So they're, they're a really good um, step into getting involved in, in free energy projects. Uh, so yeah, um, I don't know what else to tell you guys. Um, I've myself worked on pulse motors. Um, had a few few interesting uh, results with pulse motors. No no over unity, and it, it is starting to become come a bit of a belief between a few of us that the uh, Bedini motor, the pulse motor, is not actually going to be a over unity device and was never intended to be one. But that's still not a confirmed thing. But it is starting to become a fairly heavy belief amongst the community. Uh, other things out there, um, what else have I to fiddle with? I've, I've played around with uh, hydrogen a fair bit. Uh, so wa water is fuel, where we uh, basically uh, put, put energy energy across a water cell and uh, make the hydrogen and the uh, wa uh, sorry hydrogen and oxygen molecules separate from each other, turning into a gas, and we can feed that into an engine, ignite it like. A Combustible, combustible fuel, and uh, yeah, have 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 a have a fuel that's just based on uh, based on water. And you put water in, water comes out. So that's a pretty fancy, fancy uh, bit of a uh, bit of fuel there. If we can uh, if we can just hone down on the right frequencies to hit that water with. Uh, there was a man back many years ago known as Stanley Meyer, which many of you would be familiar with, who are into free energy. Uh, 
using lasers, RF frequencies and uh, electricity, he was able to uh, use, use very minimal amounts of energy to, uh, to, to split water into this uh, HHO fuel and actually had a, had a car that basically ran itself. Like it, it, it generated its own en energy to split the water molecule, which powered the engine, which was enough to keep the electricity getting generated to continue to make the HHO, so a closed loop system. Um, sadly, the story goes that uh, Stanley Meyer went r bizarrely running out of a restaurant one night screaming, they poisoned me, they poisoned me and died in the middle of the street. Subsequently, his uh, water fuel car disappeared and there was no Stanley Meyer anymore. His brother had a rough idea on how things worked, but nothing compared to Stan, and so the te te technology was lost. Um, so this is, this is something we face quite a lot is, um, you know, su suppression, and, and suppression is a, is a huge concern. This is why... Um, you, you, you'll notice uh, the honest guys who, who do this work, not, not, and we're not talking about the, the people out there who are trying to sell you kits and the people who are you know, ask, asking you for things. That you, basically, if, if, if you're approached by, by anyone or, or an ad on, the, on a website and says, you know, free energy device plans, you, know, you pay 30 bucks to be able to build your own, your own device, you know, don't, don't buy. Whatever you do, don't, don't buy those plans. All right? At the end of the day, if and when we get this done, I shouldn't say if because we are going to get this done. I, I have a lot more faith in that in, in us than that. When we get this done, it will be free sourced. It will be given away to the world for free because the bottom line being, every single time someone has tried to patent a device like this, it's um, they, they've either ended up dead. We've ended up never hearing from them again, one way or the other. Generally, that 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 boils down to they've been paid off by a major energy company. And, uh, you know, so it, it's, it's very important that, that the people pay, pay attention to the fact that it will be given away for free. It's, it's never going to be something that's going to be sold. Um, eventually, maybe people will, will put kits out, but it will only be after these guys who, like pe people like Shaziz and myself and uh, Kent and uh, who else we got? We've got a bunch of blokes over at the IAEC. You've got uh, Tin Man and uh, uh, Rono and a whole, 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 whole bunch of boys and girls over there. These are the, these are the people who are just going to rock up one day and say, I've done it, here's the plans, start building them. And, and we're literally going to have uh, replicators from all over the world are going to come together, build these devices and just start hand, handing them out to their neighbours, showing their neighbours how to build them. This is the way that this, this is, this is going to happen. It's not going to happen through purchasing kits or anything like that. So that's a really, really important thing for people, people to acknowledge. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, that's um, interesting. And, and you, uh, you kind of went through the hydrogen cell and you kind of explained the process of, uh, you know, separating the hydrogen from the oxygen. And I kind of understand that because uh, Daniel Green on Facebook uh, has been promoting his uh, water spark, spark plugs. And I've been trying to look into the process of that. But um, you also talked about other things that um, I'm not sure everybody understands. The, the pulse motor over unity, what's the difference between that and, and free energy, um, zero point? Um, we hear that a lot in the Tesla coil. So maybe you could kind of explain um, the yep. different processes of those uh, different uh, operations. Yep, no worries. Okay, so when we refer to over unity, free energy, or uh, zero point energy, we are actually talking about the same thing. Uh, and there's probably a bit of a misconception with the term, though, free energy. Um, free energy sort of leaves you with the thought that you're just going to turn the machine on, it's just going to spew out energy um, with, with no real input to the system. That's not entirely true. What we aim to do is use a small amount of energy to allow the universe to give us back a lot more energy. So... Um, Basically, we, we, we all understand that, that, that the universe is of a balance. Everything is of, everything is of a balance, and if something goes out of balance, the universe likes to, likes to put it all back to where it's meant to be. So 
when when we want to uh, when we want to access this energy, the idea being that we use uh, pulses, so generally high high voltage DC spikes, uh, and and this is where the where, where the introduction to pulse motors comes in because this is this is a place where you will first off get to see these pulses happening. Uh, you will have an input on your pulse motor of say 12 or 24 volts, but you will see spikes in your in in your pulse motor system of anywhere upwards of 400 volts right. and, and that's usable energy of 400 volts it, we, we actually have um, little um, in, in, in the circuits you will you will find that there's little light bulbs and stuff over the transistor to protect the transistor because the transistor can only take say uh, say 100 volts and uh, with the spikes that come through it is actually like burning out these transistors left right and center because it's just all this energy just coming out of well where we don't know it just turns up in the system we don't know. We don't know where it's coming yeah. from. <laughs> that's exactly. We don't. You know. I mean, we 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 assume it's coming from the universe, and and that's probably the most logical argument. But at the end of the day, it's you know, it's kind of like the God argument. You know, it's just at the end of the day, you're just gonna have to believe it's there. You know, if I can, if if I can connect up a machine for you, and you can see that you know we're putting in this amount of voltage, but we're powering your entire house off like this one little little battery. You know, then 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 the argument must must you know rest there, and you must say okay. You've shown me it works. We don't understand why, but okay. <laughs> and that's, you know, it's a bit of a faith thing, you know. At the end of the day, um, um, well, Nikola Tesla... Well, energy just permeates everything. We know that what they call dark matter is probably this energy. is probably because there's more of that than there is of matter. So it's just everywhere. So we're there, just trying yeah, to figure I, out how we're tapping into it. Is I that think, what you're saying? I think... Matter, matter that we're used to, as in like when we talk about matter, solid objects around us, I believe it takes up something like 14% or something of the, of the total universe and the rest of it being, uh, being dark energy and dark matter. So, you know, that's a huge amount of energy out there that's just sitting there and it's, well, I don't know whether it's dormant energy. It, it, it could be an alternate reality, you know, sitting out there that we, you know, are, are unable to... To, to, to see it could be a fourth dimensional system or something like that it starts to get really complex on, on what it could be and it's all surmising it's, it's the, the, you know it's, again it's, it's one of those things science is based on theories you know and as much as as, as much proof as we can bring along to prove a theory um, at the end of the day a theory stays a theory until such time as you can hold it in your hand so when you start talking like like you were playing the pod before about uh, quantum physics and he was talking about the electron and the electron only uh, only only stands in one place when it's observed and and when when you take when you take the observation away the electron just goes everywhere and it's 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 it's, it's everywhere and anywhere at any one given time mm -hmm. you know this stuff just blows your mind you're just like <sighs> but um I suppose, I don't know, it's like... Um, we're particles and we're waves. Exactly, yeah. I mean, the one question I always sort of bring, bring back for people when they start questioning me too much, and because, and I, you know, at the end of that, I don't know everything about this subject. You know, I'm a, I'm a dabbler, as you say. You know, I'm not, yeah. and, and I, I have no formal education. I, I left school when I, was, um, when I was like in year nine, so, you know, and pretty much the years that I did spend at school, I was not a conformist. I, I didn't learn a single thing while I was there. Everything I've learned has been in the last you know, sev several years doing this and being involved with the people that I have been. Um, but where was I going with that? I'm sorry. <laughs> well, no, it's, we were talking about the observer. Um, we know that there's this energy permeating everything. Um, sure, you're, right. you're not the expert on how this all this process works but which you've learned through your own experiments through your own discussion with other people yeah. who are working in the same field and the one question i always draw back to is why doesn't the planets just stop turning and the sun just go dull <laughs> why exactly why I, I, I honestly i don't i don't have an answer but neither does anybody else you know, so there is an abundance of energy. Oh, I refer to it as the sea of energy that is the universe. There is just an abundance of energy out there, and if we can work out how to tap into what drives our universe, you know, the, the universe is self-sustaining. That is one thing we do know. We know that it's not just going to randomly slow down one day and stop, and everything's just going to fizzle out into nothing. Right. So, 
it's a case of tapping on the energy that we know is there and having it tap back with, a, with an abundance of more energy. And uh, from there, being able to, uh, you know, basically harness that energy. And people have uh, tried, tried to question me before on, uh, well, okay, you're doing this with this energy, but what happens, you know, what happens out, you know, in the universe? Where, where, how does this energy get replaced? Well, the bottom, the bottom line there would be that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Now, we know that. That's, that's, a, that's a law of thermodynamics. All right. It does hold true. It's about the only one that does. <laughs> it, when, you, when you think about, at the present moment, we already create energy. We use uh, coils of copper wire and magnets to, uh, to, to generate um, a current in those, uh, in those copper windings and create electricity. And that electricity then gets, say, put into a, uh, into a light bulb, which is converted into heat, light, those kinds, of, those kinds of energies. And those energies just dissipate off into, off into the universe. And they eventually return themselves back to their natural state, which is, I would assume, dark energy, dark matter. So you've got a system whereby you are getting an abundance of energy for next to nothing, but it is pretty much no different to the energy that we're currently using. It's just coming from a different place. Mm -hmm. So it's not a case of we're going to run out or we're going to throw the universe, you know, a huge amount of, you know, difference and, and, and make all the planets go crazy and things start falling out of the universe. It's, that's uh, far, from, far from what could ever happen, especially considering the, the, we, we actually sat down and did the math one day to, uh, to design a coil to hit the human resonance of the Earth, which is the harmonic frequencies of the Earth. And we needed something like, I think it was 42,000 miles worth of copper wire. <laughs> 42,000 so, miles? <laughs> 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 Who came up with that? <laughs> uh, Kent, Kent and I sat down and did the math one day. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and, and it worked out to some astronomical figure that, um, you know, at the end of the day, no one's ever going to make a call that big. So that would be based on, if people are familiar with Nikola Tesla's work, he at one stage there made a, a it was, a, it was an, a, a mechanical oscillator, and he attached this to the side of a building, and it was basically just a rod that in, in, in an electromagnetic field that moved up and down very fluid fluid like motion and its job was to basically uh, how can i best explain this it was to basically tap the harmonic resonance of the building that it was connected to so if if you imagine if you get two people and each of you uh, hold one end of a skipping rope and you get that flicking motion so you get like a like a wave motion happening in the in in the in, the in, in that skip, you know, you get that sort of curvy wave sort of sort sort of look. That's what he was aiming for. He was he was aiming for getting that frequency, but tapping that frequency in such a way to be like one of the people on the end to give it a little bit more, give it a little bit more, and 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 have it continue that that wave all the way down the line. And by, by, by connecting this oscillator to a building, he, uh, he actually created a small earthquake Wow! On, uh, in, 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 in the US where he worked. And um, he uh, basically had to smash this, smash this device with a hammer and told all, of his, uh, told all of his assistants not to mention a word as all the police and fire brigade and everyone was rocking around town trying to work out what was going on. <laughs> so... That was with a physical building. Now, we are quite aware that there's a non-physical energy all around us, this uh, zero point, this dark energy. Now, if we can tap that in the same way with energy, he, he was able to get, to get a good, good result. He only used glass, wood, copper wire, he didn't have electronics. He was the inventor of AC electricity. So before Tesla, there wasn't electronics. There wasn't radios. There wasn't iPhones. 
There wasn't any of this. He was the pioneer. He was the man who came up with a whole lot. When he turned around and said, well, we can power the, power the world for free, we can get wireless energy to the deepest, darkest parts of the earth, we can, you know... It, it, was, all, it, it was all well and good until the financiers realised that they couldn't meter it. And once they realised they couldn't meter it, they pulled the plug on him and he was never allowed to finish it. But he had proved the concept several times. So the theory is there that it is possible and and the more the more we look and the more we learn i mean we we were just talking this morning about uh um ronald marriott and right. this gentleman mm-hmm. just recently discovered a little more than recently but recently as far as science goes recently discovered that there is actually a negative side when you're talking potential differences, there is literally a negative side to lightning. So you see at the bottom of the cloud this this this, this giant lightning bolt, and you think, "Wow, that's got some energy in it." Mm-hmm. But then these guys are noticing that there's actually two kinds of lightning, and we're we're not talking like sheet lightning here. We're talking about actual um, electro, uh, sorry, <laughs> electron makeup of the lightning. We have positive lightning and negative lightning. Now, the negative lightning is that little short, sharp snap you see out and just quick, quick, bright flash and gone. The positive is more of a thick and, a, and, and it sort of lingers in the sky. It's like, it's like a real sort of powerful flash. And, but at the other side of this, on the, on the opposite side of the cloud, so on, on the top side of the cloud, this huge energy sprite shoots off up into the, up, up into the ionosphere. And, and this really makes me really made me sit up there a couple of months ago when I saw saw these videos of his because it literally backs up exactly what Nikola Tesla was saying the whole time was that we have this one energy this positive you know or, or, or negative depending on which end you're going for but you have this have this positive energy you want to bait the electrons to uh, to have them to have them bite back literally. And and that's what's going on in the clouds. You you you've got this energy shooting down, and it's going well. It, by laws, by, by 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 fundamental laws, there has to be an opposite. And and in this case, it's it's it, it's something like you know um, the equivalent of, of of several nuclear power plants worth of energy shooting off up into the ionosphere. And if we can find a way of harnessing that we can find a way of recreating that which i think is exactly what tesla did he was able to recreate that with his with his tesla coils and the wardenclyffe tower that he was actually able to recreate that exact event and be able to draw on the energy of the sprites yes so i'm not sure if that answered everything you wanted me to answer but yeah, I, um, did we touch on the pulse murder the pulse motor. I did touch on the pulse motor. Okay. Yep. That, yeah, because uh, I was so um, excited about you were explaining over unity, free energy, and then we kind of got into things. So, yeah, um, I your video is about done converting, and um, you can give me a few seconds to set it up. Um, maybe you want to explain uh, what which this just, video is. This is going to be. Hold on. <laughs> Today, releasing a free energy device. Okay, so so this is a, a, a video I did a little while ago, um, explaining to people, um, basically what I've already what I've already j- just gone over, which is uh, or part of what I already just went over about uh, people disappearing when they try to patent these devices. At the end of the day, it, it's got to be a case of giving it to humanity because as soon as you try to patent it. You let the powers, powers that know, oh, sorry, the powers that be know what you have. Whereas we, very lucky people these days, in this day and age, we have something called the internet. And we all know the old saying, what has been seen cannot be unseen. Mm-hmm. So given, yeah. given, the, given the history, given that every single person who has ever come up with something that actually works has either disappeared, been destroyed in one way or another, we know we know that there's there's forces out there that do not want this kind of energy to 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 be brought into the brought into the major spotlight because you know when we think about it at the end of the day you can understand why these people don't these people have huge control over this world 
And if we come up with an energy that makes them obsolete, which means no oil, no gas, no nuclear power, none of this, then they're out of a job. There goes two-thirds of the world's economy. Like, <laughs> yeah, people are getting upset over that, you well, know. It'll, so It'll go two-thirds of the corporate colossum fools <laughs> economy, but I think exactly. it'll open it up to other alternatives and manufacturing and, you know, retail, wholesale, distribution will fall in the hands of the individuals instead of the big corporations and the banksters. So, uh, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's amazing and it's wonderful. And, um, and that's, uh, that's about where I'm trying to create my own uh, little niche to um, uh, provide people with the information, first of all, and give them opportunity to meet up with people who are creating these systems and, you know, match uh, workers with uh, producers and, and uh, engineers and, you know, the people who are, you know, hands-on creating this stuff and get everybody all together and, and really start putting this out there so that, you know, a lot of people have different ideas, you know, but I think uh, we have free source uh, because uh, everybody's sharing this information, we're keeping it uh, available for anybody who wants to try to um, to get involved. Uh, you you mentioned the uh, the website that you shared. There was the International Alternative Energy Center. Um, I did post it in the chat, and um, there's lots of things that you can uh, check out and and maybe get interested in. Um, maybe try some projects yourself. Uh, lots of interesting things there, so um, I'm not sure what I'm saying, but <laughs> but I, I get so excited about this because I, 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 this is what I think is the most important thing now. Uh, w I think we're done talking about the horrors of the powers that were. We're canceling the cabal. We're not, we're not going to participate in creating their morass of insanity. We're going to build the reality that we know is possible and that we deserve. And exactly. I think this is what this is what it's all about. And that's, you know, as much as it is important for people to know about all these other things, you know, I, I do have smart meters attached to the side of my apartment here. Mm. Um, you know, it's important for you to understand that and if you can avoid it at all costs, you know, but um, but also I think it's more important that we create the positive reality you know and this is this is where this is at and uh, and, uh, and and it's just so wonderful that uh we just got this total influx of all these wonderful gentle kind loving souls into awake radio who are just right there not only creating these things but promoting this information and have been doing it for many years so these they're experts whether they're scientific on the academic level they're they're certainly experienced providers of information and product so um, this is a, you actually just on, touched on something really important there and it's the fact that you don't actually have to have an education to get involved with this because at the end of the day education is fabricated Right. We, all, we already know that our mathematics, when it comes to electrical science, has been bastardized to the point that it is no longer comprehensible. It is comprehensible in the fact of making very, very uh, lossy systems that basically just burn out power and just, you know, completely inefficient. That, that's literally the way our mathematics has been redesigned. And we can thank gentlemen like, uh, like Albert Einstein for that, who were just, they thought they were doing the right thing at the right time, following their government and doing, you know, the work they were doing, but they were wrong. And, and they, they, they should have done more for humanity. They, they, they should have said, no, get stuffed, I'm not doing that. But they didn't. And, and we, we now have this problem, like we've, we've got an equation called Maxwell's equation. And, uh, well, we know about one-sixteenth of Maxwell's equation because no one knows the rest of it. We're given just a little bit to build a motor and that's it. There you go. That's all you need. We're not going to show you the rest because the rest will teach you that you can actually make a closed system and uh, you can run, run one little motor with one little battery forever. Can't have that now. Mm -hmm. And also, no. we're also learning too that the physics that we've been 
existing <laughs> under is not even correct. So there's so well, many things are so untrue about what we know or what we think we know. So this still is what I've everything. Yeah, exactly. This is what I've said before about science is based on theories. And people have to remember exactly what that word theory means. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean fact. Right. It means somebody's guess. It's somebody's thought. It's not confirmed. And that's so important to remember when it comes to this science is that, yes, what we do is theory as well. But what the mainstream science is telling you is fact is theory as well. It's guesswork. They think they know the answer. You don't have to look at quantum physics to understand that. I mean, that, that, that quantum physics, is, as amazing as it is, is the funniest subject in the world because it, it, it's, it's made up mathematics to answer questions that can't be answered. And qu qu quantum physics goes down to the smallest, the smallest denominator of anything. So when you're talking about, um, you know... Um, atomic construction so you're going right down to well what they believe is quarks you know but again it's theory because it's only based on a mathematical system which humans themselves created and if we've got that mathematical system slightly out then we've got everything else slightly out yes we made it all we made science theory we made mathematics we made it all the universe didn't give it to us we conjured that up and made it up ourselves so it's mathematics is basically very it limited as well. information. Absolutely, absolutely. Hmm. So to say that we know everything about the universe and that that's definitely the only way to make electricity and that we're just stuck in the rut that we're in. No, nah, I don't agree. Off for one second. Okay, well we'll play um, releasing a free energy device patents or tools by uh, uh, Cultus Nagrand. Am I saying your name correct? Cultus. It's Cultus Negrand. Cultus Negrand. Okay, uh, yeah. um, here's our pod. Uh, it's about 10 minutes and, and then we can discuss a little bit more about Tesla or whatever you want. We'll be right back.
Oh, not everyone's like, you know, kind-hearted and giving. My point has been is that there is no one on this planet that's going to give you free energy apart from those who are willing to give it to you for free. Good morning, guys. Uh, Call to you with another video. Yeah. Don't forget we haven't... Uh, well, I have, I have not forgotten the uh, Divada device. I'm uh, just waiting on a couple of pieces to turn up. Um, in the meantime... But I'll just make this quick little video. I don't know how quick it'll be. See how we go. Now, this is what to do with a free energy device. Alright, because there seems to be some controversy around the traps that, uh, you know, people still need to patent and, and do things like this. And, and I totally disagree with that. There is no necessity to patent everything. Uh, even though the Americans are trying to bring in a law that, uh, takes away your intellectual property rights and uh, allows someone else to patent something you put on the internet. Um, but remember, patents don't stop a single person from building one for themselves. So it's not going to affect replicators. Now, the controversy seems to lie in around what would happen. Now, here is you. Alright, and you have your device. Now, while you're alone, you are vulnerable. But you have a very, very helpful tool, and this is called the internet. The internet is your best friend. The internet allows you to show all the people on this branch who can replicate your device. But this is the internet, my friends. All right. You've managed to show a dozen people. Those dozen people are all able to show another dozen people. Now, while you're alone, you're vulnerable. Someone can come along, bang, bang, you're dead. All right. You're dead. Device has disappeared. You're no longer around. But using the internet... You can show the whole world you are no longer an issue. They may have once been able to stop one single person, but they cannot stop all of these people. And this is what you guys need to get through your heads. Alone, trying to patent something, someone's going to walk up to you with a check in one hand and a gun in the other and say, you need to disappear, mate. And you're going to do it. Whether you think you will or not, you're going to because the fear of death, doesn't matter how good of a person you are. Whereas, before you even, like, I've, I've just noticed uh, why me B2 uh, has come along and said that he has cracked the code for hydrogen production. Well, as I said to him today, we don't need another uh, another Stanley Meyer. So best, instead of just having a music video for us, he actually shows us what he did. Um, he's got the attention now. He could end up dead tonight, and we'll never, ever know. By showing all these people on the internet, someone in his position becomes untouchable. Well, not necessarily untouchable, but at the end of the day, what's the point of killing them off? You can kill this person off. Boom. Are you going to kill all these people off as well? All over the world, you're just going to start hunting down people and taking people out to stop this from getting out? Well, I highly doubt they're going to start chasing 100,000 people around the globe to stop what we're doing. So what you need to understand is the internet. This is your primary tool. This is why things like SOPA and uh, internet filters 
a horrible idea. And they are what's going to get us into freaking trouble. Um, to me, guys, this isn't really overly complicated stuff. <clears throat> While you stand alone, you're vulnerable. When you show a hundred thousand people, there's no point in taking you out anymore. None whatsoever. Killing you isn't going to stop anything. In fact, killing you at this point is only going to strengthen your argument and make these people all work even harder to get your device out. So I don't want to hear no more bullshit about, oh, not everyone's like, you know, kind-hearted and giving. My point has been is that there is no one on this planet that's going to give you free energy apart from those who are willing to give it to you for free. Alright, let me just... Oh, wee little head. My point has been very simply this, and that is that not one person out there who's going to patent an idea is going to be the one to release it to you. Alright? Greed trying to say, oh, it was me, it was me. This is what gets people into trouble. There's no necessity for it. We have the internet. We have forums like RWG Research, Zero Fossil Fuels, uh, the International Alternative Energy Centre, and I'm sure, you know, energetic forums, and there's a bunch of others out there I can't name just straight off the top of my head right now. All you need to do is go and make a post in each one of these. Contact someone like me. Tell me that you've got something serious. I'll come straight out here. I'll build it. If it works, I'll help make the bastard viral. And th these are the people who you need. You don't need the patent office. The patent office is only going to tell the rich guys that you've got something and it's fair income, and then they're going to come pay you a visit. And then where are you at? You lose your device. You're not able to fucking come and talk to any of us, because if you do, you're going to die. That's what this thing was given to you guys for, alright? The internet. That's your friend. By the time you've shown 100,000 people, your life cannot be in jeopardy. There's no necessity to kill you off. Well, that's pretty much all I have to say, guys. If, if it's still too complicated for you as well, then you're just fucked in the head. I can't help you. It's that simple. While you're fucking a single person alone, trying to fucking patent something, you're vulnerable. When you fucking give it away, and try to try to do something for humanity and not just for your fucking self that's when we're going to fucking come to the bottom of this mate until then people are going to keep disappearing so that's all I pretty much had to say guys I just wanted to make that I wanted to, uh, to paint you a very clear picture of uh, where I stand on this topic and uh, where, you, where you should all stand on this topic. At the end of the day, you, you do realise you only have the two options. You have patent your device and disappear, share your device, help humanity. May, you may never get a red cent for what you've done, but I'm tipping that's not why we're here. And uh, if that is why you're here, then you probably shouldn't be. You know, this is something you've got to do from here. And do it for everyone out there. It's not for yourself. It's not for you to get rich off free energy. It's so that kids in Ethiopia can sterilise fucking water. Um, you know, uh, it's not a selfish thing we're doing. So, don't ever want to hear about patenting again. Simple as shit. You're not going to patent, patent something and uh, release it as free energy because as soon as you do, as soon as that patent's in, you're going to disappear one way or the other. So it's completely up to you what you do, but uh, the smart road is to give it away. And this this conversation's been brought up before as well, and you know. If I was a millionaire and you came up with a free energy device that worked, I'd send you a check for a million bucks. Why not? You just saved me a lifetime of paying, paying for energy. You know, I'm, I'm tipping there are good people out there who have money who would be willing to chuck you a coin. 
Um, I can't think of the bloke's name, but there's a professor, professor somewhere um, who's, who's got a million dollar prize for someone who comes up with a perpetual motion device, isn't there? So, uh, you know, there's access to money if you really pull it off, but uh, you need to give it away. You can't be, uh, you can't be greedy. You, you give it away, someone like me, you know, I mean, I'm not a millionaire yet, I'd like to be one day, and if I am, well, you come up with a free energy device, I'm going to send you a cheque. Simple. And there's more than just me out there. If I, th if, if I think I would do that, then there's got to be more people out there who would do it. So I can't be alone. Simple. Anyway, that's a, that's a wrap there, guys. I think I'll just leave it there. I'm starting to ramble on a little bit now. So uh, you got the gist? All right, I don't need no more bullshit about patents. That's that. All right. Got you all. And welcome back. Uh, we're here with Coltis Negrand, and uh, we just listened to his uh, pod, which was uh, releasing a free en energy device. Uh, patents are for tools, <laughs> which is a great title, and it was really an uh, instructive uh, video on why things should be a uh, free source, why uh, there's a safety in numbers. So uh, welcome back to... Uh, Call, I'm going to call you Negron, <laughs> Coltis, I'm sorry. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, we're on Awake Radio. Thank you. No worries. So, um, the video, uh, I didn't get to watch the whole thing because we were kind of chatting, but um, the part that I saw was just explaining how when you have so many people working on the same project instead of uh, going as an individual and getting a patent that you'll uh, you'll you know you'll be accosted uh, the government corporations the banksters whoever the dark entities <laughs> will come and uh, try to get you to sign over all your work uh, and then have it suppressed or you know threaten to kill you and your family if you don't uh, do what they want so, uh, so what what um, inspired you to to even make that video? Because it's really important. Well, it's because so many people out there still believe that patenting an, an, an energy device like this would be a smart idea. And as I've just pointed out in that video, it's it's not a smart idea. At the end of the day, we, we've the the proof is in the pudding in history. Is that every single time someone has tried to uh, you know get rich or be the notoriety of making that, that device by patenting it. They've all disappeared in one way or the other. They've either been killed off, paid off, or, you know, like Nikola Tesla, just, just destroyed as a man, you know? So it, it really doesn't, it's really not rocket science to me that the only thing we can do is throw it out on the internet in its entirety with an easily-to-follow replication guide and say, Guys, I've done it. Here's the device. And there is already thousands and thousands of people out there who will pick it up and build it. And if you're honest, if you really do have it, it will go global in days. So literally, you, you, you imagine the internet. If I send it out to 10 people and those 10 people send it out to 10 people and those people send it out to a t to another 10 people and it just keeps going out like each individual person sends it out to 10 people you can imagine the pyramid effect that happens from that it's it's becomes viral on the internet amongst the free energy community and once it does that that's when it'll make it into more mainstream where people who have not been involved in this before will start noticing this stuff going on on their, you know, on their friends' Facebook pages or, you know, wherever, and they'll start going, well, you know, what's going on here? And people will start reading up about it and people will get excited. And before you know it, too many people will know about it for anyone to be able to stop it. Presently, if you patent an idea, the old powers that be can rock up and say, hey, nice patent. Can we buy it off you? We can't. Would you like to eat some lead? And they're your two options. Whereas if you put it out there for everyone to take it and everyone to use it for free, then you're safe. You, you, you can't be touched. What's the point of touching you when 10,000 other people already have the design? Yeah. can't hurt you. Yeah. You know? 
all, all, all that would do at that stage is reinforce the fact that your invention had something. You become a martyr. And that's not what they want either. So it's basically a game of chess we're playing with them at the moment and we need to get them into checkmate and the internet is our tool for getting them into checkmate. Absolutely. Once we can, once, once we design or, com or complete the replications and we can get them out there, then we've got a winner. But trying to patent and trying to go down that road is only going to end up bad. That's, that's not going to work out well for you. History has taught us that. And, you know, the old saying goes, if you keep doing what you've always done, you're always going to get the same result, aren't you? So mm -hmm. we have to do something different this time around. Patenting doesn't work. Absolutely. Um, from what I understand about Tesla is that um, he was not the, the first person to probably uh, create uh, wireless devices, but um, he's probably the most uh, noted person in the last uh, over 100 years who created um, wireless technologies. Um, I'm interested in, in what he created at Wardenclyffe. Um, there yes. was the tower. Do you understand that uh, a little bit? Because I, I really don't, and I would love to know more about it. Okay. So the theory of, of Wardenclyffe, and, and again, we're back at theories because everything's suppressed and we really don't know, but we do have a lot of documentation we have been able to get our hands on. And it would seem that Tesla based the uh, Wardenclyffe Tower design on the uh, Great Pyramid of Giza, which as well seems to uh, correlate to being some sort of an energy device. Mm -hmm. uh, if we focus on, 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 the, on the Great Pyramid, for example, uh, that's the best way to go about explaining You've got a, okay, we'll start right at the very lower level. You've got an aquifer, which is um, a, lumin a, a, um, a, a, section, of, a section of earth un under the ground where water raises and, and lowers due to either tidal or, uh, or seasonal, seasonal weather patterns. Okay, so they had a, now I, off the top of my head, I can't tell you the actual um, makeup of the pyramid but I will be um, as accurate as I can be. They had a conductor running down into this aquifer, which led up into a chamber uh, known as the King's Chamber, which had some uh, known as resonant cavities, which is, again, what we'll talk about before with uh, resonant frequencies. And it is believed that this is where the Ark of the Covenant was stored, which is referred to as the, um, the, the, the energy or the, the, the power of Egypt. Okay? And if we've got this right, the Ark of the Covenant was that small amount of energy we were discussing before to put into a system like this mm -hmm. to get it to give us a lot more energy back. And the rest of the construction of the pyramid was basically the same as a capacitor and for those of you who don't don't understand the construction of a capacitor, you've basically got a conductive, a conductive material, a dielectric material, which is a material that does not allow electricity to pass through it, and then another conductor of the same size and shape. And by placing those three materials together, you make a capacitor. It's it, it's a um, pretty much like a little battery. So you're actually able to store electrons on these plates and draw them off as, as, as per required. The construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza was exactly that. It was layers of different materials, being a conductive layer, an insulating layer, and another conductive layer on the inside, and then a conductive rod, basically, which ran into the aquifer. Now, if we look at Tesla's Wardenclyffe design, we've got a very similar thing. We have a capacitor, which is the very top of the tower. That was, that, that was one plate of the capacitor. The dielectric was the air between that dome on the top and the actual globe of the Earth, the globe of the Earth being the second plate. So there's your capacitor. And he had massive, massive earth rods 
so grounding posts for, for electrical grounding uh, built underneath the tower so they that uh, being being uh, where where he built that was also on an aquifer and also on a fault line which I forgot to mention the same as uh, the same as the Great Pyramid of Giza uh, it's actually on the San Andreas fault line for for the Wardenclyffe Tower and the uh, Tesla supplied a small amount of energy to this capacitance system that was earthed out. And he was able to draw a lot more energy out of it than what was ever put into it. And that's the basic theory behind the Wardenclyffe Tower. Um, then it goes on to be a, not only a wireless receiver of the energy that is in the universe, but also a transmitter where it uses the... Um, now, let me get the terminology right here. It's called the telluric currents effect and that is literally the uh the electrical currents that already run through the earth what because because we were just discussing before that you know we're all just we're all just vibrations we're all just little you know particles and neutrons and photons and all the rest of it and so is the earth it just is an electrical vibration magnetic vibration of certain particles and it holds itself together quite nicely by doing such and uh the idea being with, with the Wardenclyffe Tower was to not send the energy through the air, as many people think. It was actually to send the energy through the Earth itself. And using the Earth's telluric currents would actually amplify that signal through the Earth. So by the time it got to the other tower, you could draw off that tower exactly what you could... Uh, sorry, exactly what you were putting in at the other end with no losses, but you could also draw the same amount of energy out of several several other towers, all off. So, so for example, if, if you were putting in one amp of energy into your transmission tower, you could draw one amp at coil B, one amp at coil coil. Uh, sorry, one one amp at coil A, one amp at coil B, one amp at coil C. All the way, you could have multiple coils and all draw one amp off every single one of them when you're only putting one amp into the entire system. Amazing. So, yeah, that is pretty cool. Where it's the it's you're basically energizing the earth, but it's just giving you even more energy than you've given it in the first place. And the mind kind of boggles a little there as to exactly what's going on, but that's the theory. It's using the telluric current to the earth, you're able to uh amplify the signal not necessarily amplify because you're not going to end up with more out of one end than you would of what you're putting in but you will be able to draw from more points the same amount of energy if you follow what i'm saying yes so yeah and that's that's pretty much the theory behind behind the whole warden cliff thing and if we can if we can recreate the warden cliff then africa gets electricity tomorrow yeah you know, they can. We'll 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 send them over some uh, some some ultraviolet uh, fluorescent globes and they and and some copper wire and they can go crazy. Uh, you know, sterilizing their water and uh, doing things like that. Well, you, you, you know, you hear a lot of different things. Um, some people say um, hydrogen energy is impractical. Some people say the uh, the cost for production. Uh, an implementation of solar or wind power is just uh, not practical. What are your What are your takes on these other alternative uh, fuel sources? Sorry, Chrissy, you broke up there. Oh, so, I'm sorry. Um, I was just trying to find out what your opinion was because sometimes you hear that um, the cost for production and implementation of uh, solar and wind power is cost prohibitive and you don't get as much uh, energy out of it and by the time you you make back the money that you put in to implement those uh, energy uh, devices you know they break down and you really don't get you don't get the money that you that you spent to to implement that so you know that's actually very true that is actually very true um, what it costs to make a solar panel when you're talking energy like you, you 
people don't add up exactly what it costs to make something. When, when, you, when you consider the cost of having mining the materials, transporting materials, manufacturing those materials, implementing those materials, those materials then only last, then only last 20 years and you've paid out the nose for them, you, they, it doesn't offset itself. There, there, is not, there isn't the, the energy coming out of that system to pay for itself. And that's really, really sad. Here in Australia, we, we face an even bigger problem when it comes to solar. I mean, heck, we're, we're in one of the sunniest parts of the world. But our government pretty much screwed us over when it came to solar because when they implemented all the um, all these schemes to get people involved in solar basically they've set them up so that you are you, you're allowed one of two things you can either go completely off grid and have your own power system which mm, that may offset itself but it would only barely break even Right. when you have the other option which is a grid tie system we're not allowed to have batteries so we're not allowed to store our energy we have to feed all the energy from our solar panels into the grid and the people who do that get paid the off-peak rate for energy for the energy that they supply then very quickly that that's actually not what's going to happen. They're getting paid four cents a kilowatt. They're getting charged 40 cents a kilowatt and they're not allowed to store any of their own energy. Yeah, it's, um, they have the same system here in the United States. They, you have to have a, it set up. To, it's hooked up to the energy grid already in, in place. But I had no idea that, that that was the whole system service. But yeah, mm. I've, seen, I've seen that set up here too. Yeah, so but between the two options you've got, you, you've got one option that's barely going to break even. And, and if you lived out somewhere like where I live, I live out in a place called Roxby Downs in South Australia. We have days over summer that get as high as 56 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. So like 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, solar panels don't last 20 years out here. They last 12 to 15 years. Right. So live out here is not even a point in bothering with solar. Well, it's, it's never pay for itself. Yeah, they have solar panels, and they also have their they have solar uh, roof tiles. They have solar paint. They have all these different solar. Um, a lot of everywhere. new things coming. Objects. Just, yeah. Yep, I've um, there's 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 a clear solar panel, and uh, the, uh, I believe uh, the quota on on this new technology I was reading about last night is uh, it's more like thirty cents a watt, which uh, would work out at the present moment. You pay uh, about two hundred dollars for a hundred for a hundred watt solar panel. You'd end up paying about thirty dollars for a for a hundred watt solar panel. And if that manages to come to mainstream, that will change everything. But currently, the price that it costs to manufacture a solar panel, and especially here in Australia, and especially where I am here in Australia, there, there isn't any point implementing it because your solar panel system is not going to be able to last the, the amount of years they're going to need to last to offset the cost of your system. So, you know so what I mean? we're really we're really at a at a turning point we're at a crossroads it's um we have we have the knowledge that this uh, technology exists we have people creating uh different versions different aspects of uh of these different uh, uh devices um how do we how do we go from this point to uh to be able to provide it for a larger for the larger community how uh, what what do you think that we might need to do as individuals um, besides working on these devices to uh, to really get this in people's homes and get it implemented and get it working. Yeah, well, each each individual person has a separate skill. All right, each each person is is good at good at one specific thing. I'm really good at working on devices. I'm not so 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 good at promoting them. Um, <clears throat> 
I tend to get a little bit technical and things and lose people. Whereas my wife, uh, or fiance Catherine, can can sit down and she can explain this stuff after I've finished explaining it to her in techni- in, in all technical terms. She can sit down and explain it to the average Joe Blow who will actually accept it rather than when I'm explaining to it, you just see their eyes going off and they're just like, I do not know what you're saying, calls here. <laughs> you know, so, then there's people like you who, who absolutely love it, don't know how to get involved, but you already are. Here I am on your radio show and you're promoting the whole deal. You, you're not necessarily just promoting me, you're promoting the whole free energy community, you know? Absolutely. There's yeah. other people out there. I've 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 got a I've got a bloke who um who regularly sends me little bits and pieces to help me with my builds. You know, he's 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 um he's he's lucky to be in a position where he's where he's well off and he's able to help help out. I'm on a pension. I, I can't afford a lot, but I do do some pretty good work with what I what I can get my hands on. And this fella rocked up only only a couple of months ago, but um yeah, you know, we've turned out to be really, really good buddies, and uh, you know he's um, he's always there if I ever need anything. I say, mate, you know, I'm 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 really looking looking at getting one of these, but I'm a little bit short. You know, do you reckon you can? Help? Yeah, mate. Yeah, bang. There's four hundred bucks. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> you know, so literally, whatever you think you can do to help the the the, the free energy community. Please do. Like you, you may be a promoter. You, you, you may have a garage full of old, of old bits and bobs that you think someone might actually get some use out of. You know, you, you, you're willing to post them, post them out. Do, do, do a little YouTube video and, and you know, take us for a walk around your shed and say, hey, if anyone's interested, I've got this whole box of stuff over here. It's all this, that, and that. You know, if anyone's interested, drop, 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 drop me an email and, and we'll discuss it. You know, do, 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 do little things like that. Anything that you, you consider that you may be able to help with. So promotions, donations, just being there for someone even. Like one of the big things we face is, you know, a lot of the time we feel a little bit, you know, removed from society. So embrace us, say g'day to us, you know, ask us how we're doing, check out, you know, our work, encourage us, you know, those, those sorts of things. Everyone's got a, got, got a unique ability. You just have to work out what that one unique ability is that you have that you can offer and go all out, help us out, do what you can. Absolutely, and maybe you want to share about your websites and your YouTube channel. Yeah, no worries. All right, so um, you can find me on Facebook. It is uh, facebook.com forward slash Desert Experimenter. And on YouTube, you will find me on youtube.com forward slash Desert Experimenter. And if you want to come and get involved in the projects, uh, you'll want to come along to the International Alternative Energy Centre, which is the IA, oh, sorry, is IAEC dot forumco.com and uh, they're pretty much the my three my three major sites um, other than that um, listen to Shaziz's Mad Science on a Saturday <laughs> that's another, another really good really good place and uh, yeah I think that's about it and you're since you're a new host here at awake radio.co.uk uh, when is your show and talk about your co-host as well Okay, so uh, I'll be uh, I'll be now hosting a show on a Tuesday morning. Um, this is, I, I actually screwed up on the on the time zones when I was working this out with uh, Steve the other day, so they're getting changed around from uh, what no they originally problem. were. Uh, from uh, is it going to be your morning? Your your morning time? I'm, I'm giving times based on the schedule at Awake Radio, so that'll be based on Dublin time. So it will be. Uh, Three three to five on a on a Tuesday for my for my uh, Culty's Corner with uh, with Kent, and uh, on a Wednesday at the same time I will be doing a rebroadcast of uh, Shaziz's Knights of the Round Table that where uh, both Kent and I are a part of every week. So uh, yeah, they're the two shows. And uh, Kent, what can I say about Kent? Kent's just a cool bloke. Kent's um, been involved in free energy for quite a while. Kent's um, Kent's um, pretty much doubled in doubled in all these devices. Made quite a few different devices himself, and just like me, has met met just about all the fraudsters that are out there who claim that they've got something, and turns out they don't. But you know, it's all part and parcel of of, of the job. So you know, I mean, that's um, basically Kent and I in a nutshell is where free energy nuts. That's what we do, <laughs> and that's perfect. Um, and while we're chatting, I am uh, diligently trying to convert 
a Stanley Myers video that I thought I already had, um, and his brother on how water fuel injection, uh, I think it's called works, I'm not sure, um, uh, fuel injection systems yeah. work, yeah, that's the title. So um, I still have a few more minutes on that, and um, if there's anything else you'd like to share, uh, we can go to a station break and play a couple couple more songs and um and just thank you so much for uh being here at awake radio and for sharing at this particular time this wonderful information about how these different systems uh operate and uh and how we can as individuals uh, continue to move this uh, paradigm forward <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for having me. It's been uh, been a bit of a blast. <laughs> well, thank you, Cultus Culty. <laughs> very nice meeting you, and uh, looking forward to you and Kent uh, presenting your wonderful information, probably starting next week. Yep. Okay. Yep. We've uh, actually Kent's over, still over in Hawaii at the present moment, and given the uh, given the change from one station to the other, we thought we'd just give it the week, and we can uh, get to know you guys here at Awake and learn what you're all about and all the rest of it, and then we'll start our show when Kent gets back from Hawaii, and we can just be in our be in our zones as normal and take it all from there. So I think we're going to fit in extremely well here. Yes, absolutely, and and thank you again for this impromptu interview and uh, for all the wonderful information and the links and uh well i'll just post everything in the chat box and um and we'll be chatting soon we'll be chatting more uh hopefully we can get to talk to ron uh, maybe we'll have a little round table i think uh his information is uh, very uh, important to this discussion and and you know it's just very kind of fascinating sorry. fascinating times uh, synchronistic and and thank you also for the link uh, to the Celestine Prophecies. We, we didn't even talk about that, <laughs> but maybe oh, we'll, s we'll save that for another time. I've taken so much of your time now. I really appreciate it. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> thank you. We'll talk to you soon. No worries. Thank you. Bye, Colty. See ya. Well, there you go. We have the... Uh, you're, yeah, I'm still on air, so you can stay on or hang up, whatever you want. I just wanted to uh, introduce you again or just to reaffirm that uh, Colty and Kent will be on air here at Awake Radio starting in the next couple weeks. And uh, they'll also be presenting uh, information from Shaziz's is Knights of the Round Table. <laughs> so we'll have a lot of wonderful things. So here we have the station identification. You see what's sending out the negative waves, did Moriarty? But Oddball, I did try and tell them. But they won't listen. I tried. Sure. But I did. I did try. <sighs> oh, man. Don't hit me with them negative waves so early in the morning. But I can't force them to listen. I can't. Always with the negative waves, Moriarty. Always with the negative waves. Have a little faith, baby. Have a little faith. But I keep trying. Oddball, I keep trying. But they won't listen. They won't tune in. They really won't. Why don't you knock it off with them negative waves? Why don't you dig how beautiful it is out here? 